What if you're not really getting the support from your spouse or your partner uh, when it comes to your business and your entrepreneurial journey? What's up guys, Ron Carter here. And today I wanna cover a topic that I see not too many people really talking about uh, on YouTube. I wanted to talk about this because like I said, I, I've experienced this. This is a common thing. I've seen a lot of stuff online where people are saying that, hey, uh, there's like really two different dynamics that, that work in a relationship when it comes to being an entrepreneur. And so those two different dynamics, I, I learned this, I think it was from Alex Ramosi, uh, but he was saying that there's one, and it kind of uses sports analogies, where he's saying one dynamic is your partner is kind of like the cheerleader. Like they're not there on the field with you, but they're like fully supportive and they're just like rah, 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 like yeah, go, do, do the thing. And then the other dynamic is they're actually a member of the team. They're in the business with you, you're working on it together. And I heard this and I thought like, well, shit, what if like, what if the, the person that I love that's in my life doesn't fit into any of those two categories? And so I started looking up on YouTube and a lot of this was because there was like tensions arising. And just to share what I was experiencing um, was, so I started affiliate marketing. I started this YouTube channel. I started making content years ago, right? And a lot of the stuff that I've done online has kind of formed me into the person that I am today. And so fast forward a few years, and then I meet this amazing person, right? And we kick it off and we start a relationship. We live together now. Uh, it's been almost two years since we met. And, uh, and so she sees me working, and if you're watching this, I got nothing but love for you. I'm not even gonna say anything bad, because um, there is nothing bad to say. But uh, she sees how much work I put into this, and she sees what I get in return. And, she's, and she thinks, because she cares about me, like, why are you doing this? I don't understand why this is so important to you, and why you're putting in so much time and, and effort into this and it doesn't it doesn't match up with the view of of like how she sees me right and so for the longest time we'd have conversations about this and then i i wouldn't understand how she doesn't see it she doesn't understand like why i want to do this and then there's like this point of contention where it's like all right i make videos and i do stuff when she's not even home because the energy feels weird and um and it's just this uh like everything else is great, but there's this one like point of contention, right? And maybe you've experienced this too. And so I just want to share something that's helped at least for me. Um, and, and this is, it's like an ongoing situation. This is in flux, right? It's happening in, in real time. But uh, I think that it will help because I started every time we would get in like an argument or a fight about it. We don't even really fight, but we just get into like a disagreement about it. Then I would go on YouTube and look for advice from people. And the one common theme that I've noticed is that when people, when people are together and they experience a hardship or they experience something that causes one of them or both of them to want to go into business, it's very easy for the other partner to become uh, either a part of the team, right? Where they're in it with you, they're in the business with you, they're, you split responsibilities and you're literally running this business together, or it's very easy for them to become uh, the cheerleader who's like, yeah, go do the thing, I support you 100%, everything that you're doing, however much time that you need to, to do that, do it. Because they know that you're solving a problem that they've experienced. They experience this problem with you and you're putting in this time and this effort and this work to solve that problem and they understand that and they respect that and so they support it. But when it's the other way around, when you experience a problem before you even met the person that you may be with right now, then it's a different story. And it's funny because we were talking about this last night and, uh, and she asked me a really important question. She said, you know, this is, it just seems like this thing that you do, it's so wrapped up in your identity. Like, I, I just want to know why, like, why is it? Why, why is this so important to you? And it's funny because this is a question that I ask people on, on like calls when they want to enroll into like one of my offers or 
when I was selling for a coaching company, this was a question that I would ask, you know, prospects. And, and so I thought about it and I said, why, why is this so important to me? And it reminded me of this story um, that, and this is why I started to get into business in the first place. And I was able to share this story with her. In 2017, I had been looking into ways to make money online and, and ways to make money that's not like a traditional job. I had this janitor job in Los Angeles. I hated the job. I was working like 50 to 60 hours a week. So I was working a lot of overtime and that's what I was using to sustain myself because the pay was shit there. One day, out of nowhere, not my fault at all, I was crossing a street at a four-way crosswalk and I got hit by a car. This car was fully stopped and I looked to my right, I see it fully stopped, it's about to cross, it's, it's going to, you know, go through the intersection and but it's fully stopped. And so I look to my left to see if there's traffic coming this way. There's no traffic. I start taking steps out into the street. Whap! I get smacked by this car. I get thrown 30 feet up the street, tore a bunch of ligaments in my knee, herniated disc in my back, in my lower back. Luckily, I was right outside of the hospital, so I just went straight into the ER. And I go into the ER, and immediately, uh, like, well, I wait a couple hours, but then they MRI me, they MRI my back, my knee. That's how I know that, you know, torn ligaments, herniated discs, and I couldn't work, and I got put on physical therapy. And so I think it was about four months I was going to physical therapy and not working. I was on crutches. After my crutches, I had a cane, and I was walking around with a cane. And um, when I was not working, I was on this thing called uh, like FMLA. It's, it's like a type of leave. Uh, it's like a type of disability um, that you can get if you're in an accident. I didn't get workers comp because I wasn't on the job when I got hit. I was off the clock, uh, even though I was right outside of work. And so the way that this worked is I was going to continue to get paid. I think it was for the first two months, uh, continue to get paid, but not my overtime that I was accustomed to that I really needed to survive. I could only get paid for the 40 hours that I was originally scheduled per week. And so this means that my income dropped substantially and there was nothing I could do about it. And once that ran out, then I had to use the sick leave that I had accumulated for five years. I've been working for five years, saving my sick time, saving my sick time. And I used all of that to get the next two months off work and still was only getting paid just the, the 40 hours per week. And so, and the whole time I'm going through this, I'm thinking like, all right, it's gonna be okay because we're supposed to be getting a settlement. And, uh, and the lawyer had said that we should be getting around 100 grand. So 100K for me, 100K for the lawyer, 100K for the doctor and uh that i was getting physical therapy from so i'm thinking like i know this really sucks i'm like i have like no budget no savings all my sick leave is all gone but it's gonna be okay because i'm gonna get this money and once all my sick leave ran out i had to return back to work um i still had my cane but the doctor okayed me they said hey you can go to work just take it easy while you're there because my work was physical there and so i'm back at work and then i get a call from my lawyer one day and the lawyer says you know, uh, I got some, I got some good news and I got some bad news. And I said, okay, uh, just tell me the bad news. What is it? She said, you might want to take a seat. So I knew like, okay, this is definitely not good. And so I sit down and I say, well, what's up? And she says, okay, so the bad news is we're not going to get that $300,000 settlement. And I was just deflated. And she said, but the good news is you are, you, you are getting a settlement. The driver had liability insurance. So that means that we're getting a $15,000 settlement. And I was like 15,000 each. And she said, no, we're going to be splitting that between me, you and the doctor. And I knew that my doctor's bills were all my doctors. Uh, what I owed the doctor already was somewhere around 8,500. So I was like, okay, so you get your, five grand, the doctor gets 8,500 and I get 1500 bucks for my trouble for all this. Like all my, all my leave is gone. Like I've suffered through all this shit for the last four months. 
um, walking around on this freaking cane and I get 1500 bucks. And then uh, and she said, yeah, basically. And, and the doctor was actually really cool. Instead of charging me, they applied some discounts so that we were able to split it three ways evenly. And, uh, and from that moment on, I realized the lack of, of security that really came with a job. And the only reason I didn't lose that job is because it was a federal job. I was a federal employee. If I worked for a for-profit company and I had to take that much time off, I doubt I would still be there. And that's when I, I realized how insecure having a traditional job as my sole means of, of income really is. And I vowed to myself from that day forward that I was never, ever going to put myself in that position again in my life, ever, no matter what. And, uh, and so I took that five grand that I got, and that's when I started investing. At first, I was investing in different tools and software and trying to learn from YouTube videos alone on how to do stuff. And, and I was just hemorrhaging that money. I spent all that money to learn what to not do, basically. And then I started investing in courses and programs. And, and through that, through that, I started developing skills. I started developing skills on how to become a good communicator. I learned how to be on video. I did a lot of live videos. I did a lot of podcast episodes. I, I've learned how to speak, how to articulate my ideas, how to communicate, uh, learn the skill of selling, learn the skill of Facebook Messenger. Um, and all this has led to the person that I am today. And when I explained this, to my girlfriend last night, it started to make sense to her because she viewed entrepreneurship as a very insecure thing. It's not insecure like I don't feel good about myself, but there's not much security there. She's very security driven, right? It's like having a sole piece of, uh, of income from a job is, is very secure, right? She didn't, in her mind, but she didn't have this experience that I had in life. Right? Where it's like, well, I had that and something happened that wasn't my fault. It wasn't the people's fault that I work for. It's not like I got fired or laid off or something like that. Just a freak accident that could happen to anybody at any day and time happened. And it took that security completely away. And so, and when I explained that, it's like, she said, I'm really glad that you shared that with me. I, I feel like I understand like why you do what you do now. And then I said, yeah, and you know what? Um, that's, that was like the beginning of it. That's what got me started. That's what got me to go down this road. But through it, there's something else that I discovered. And that's that the more I threw myself into this, the better the person that I became. Like I'm sober now me realizing that I needed to get sober and get off of drugs and alcohol was something that happened when, when I realized that I wasn't going to go further in business until I really uh, developed myself. And I knew that that was one of the things that I needed to do to really become the best human being that I can be, to be 1% better than, than, than I was yesterday. That that was the next thing on the chopping block. And, and so I was able to explain like this to her, like, hey, this person that you've met today or that you've met and that you fell in love with and that, you know, that, that I am, the person that you know me as today, this person has been curated, developed through the work that you see me do. It's just, it's, it was the work that I was doing before we met, but it's the same work and it's the stuff that I love doing. And that's why I love doing it. And, and, and now I don't love doing it just because I want some security or I want some money or anything like that. It's like, that stuff's great. It's nice. It's a byproduct of it. But now it's like, what I love about it is the fact that it enables me to be more. And when I can, when I can enhance who I'm being and how I'm showing up in the world, then I'm able to do more. And when I'm able to do more, I'm able to affect other people positively. And that's it. And the more I can be, the more I can do, the more people I can impact. And when I'm impacting people, guess what? You start making money. You start making money, you continue to make money, you're able to make more money. 
Um, that's a byproduct of that. And so when I explain this, then she's like, now this makes sense because this is, because from her view, all she saw is that I'm, I'm a really good communicator. I have been as long as she's known me. So it seems like I'm just, that's who, just who I am and who I've always been, but it's, but it's not. And that person was built. And, uh, and also that I care about people and that, that I want to be able to help people like consistently all the time. So I go to recovery meetings, I sponsor people there. I help them through the same process that I went through to get sober. And she knows that I'm really passionate about that. And I'm like, all of this is like this passion in this person that I've, that I've built myself to be that wants to help other people. And, but I've built this person that wants to be able to be more and have this enhanced capacity to help other people through, through being in the fucking trenches when it comes to business and content creation. And all that started was from, all that started from the security being taken away. And, and after this conversation, she really understands it now. And, and so I share this with you guys because maybe, maybe if you do have the experience of having a partner that may not support you in this area or aspect of your life, in this specific one, the solution may be simpler than you think. The solution may be just being able to sit down and have, an, have a conversation where you're both curious instead of trying to force how you want the other person to act or behave or think or believe and vice versa. Have a conversation where you're curious and you're inquisitive on why they may believe something or why they may think something. And, and, and hopefully out of this conversation, you can share and communicate why this journey is important to you. Why it's important to you. And, and maybe potentially through that, they'll be able to see that and then they'll be able to, to start supporting. And, and they may not be 100% cheerleader like how you want them to be, but this isn't about getting people to do the things that we want them to do or believe the things that we want them to believe. If you can get your partner to truly understand why something is really important to you, uh, then if this is a person that really you should be with and that should be with you, then then hopefully that they can get on board with whatever it is that you're doing. Now they may not support you 100% like from the sidelines all day long like they're a cheerleader because they have their own life and, and whatnot, but uh, at least they won't be bringing your energy down while you're taking the actions that you're taking because they understand it. And so hopefully that helps some of you guys who may be experiencing this or something like this. Uh, hopefully it just helps just to know that you're not the only one because I know I started looking for advice on YouTube and I just didn't see it. And, uh, and I said, well, I'm not going to make a video about this until I've at least come to some kind of re resolution. Uh, and so smash that like button. If you did like this, if it was helpful, let me know in the comments if this is something that you've experienced too. And yeah, let me know in the comments if this is something that you've experienced too. And we'll see you guys in the next video. If you want to learn more about affiliate marketing, sales, in general, the stuff that I do, there's some videos up here. There's one over here, one over here. And as always, subscribe to the channel. See you guys in the next one. Peace.